Good morning, everyone. One of the favorite summer activities is for people to spend either a day or a few hours at the beach. And with the beach, you see some people playing in the sand and even some people playing with sa and making sandcastles. And anyone who has ever built a sandcastle knows just how fun it can be. You fill up a pail after a pail to either form a small or a very magnificent and large structure. This can actually be very exciting. Whether you're a child or a professional, you are never too old to enjoy a day playing in the sand. Unfortunately, regardless of how well you build your sand structure, it will not last very long. A high tide or a little rain can quickly bring down what was very beautiful and what took many hours to build. Much time to build something and then quickly it quickly falls apart and collapses. Much more important than anything we may build in the sand, there are things in our lives that also come tumbling down just as quickly and for very similar reasons. If our beliefs or attitudes, our views of the world, or our views of ourselves are not built on the solid foundation of faith and with the good material of truth, then sooner, sooner or later, these will also come tumbling down. If we want our life to have a firm foundation, and if we want our life to be a solid structure, then we need to build everything on our faith in Christ and on his teachings, and not on passing trends and fads, which are very much like sand. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, but it did not fall because it had been built upon the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So it is important for us to ask ourselves some very important questions every day. What part of our life is crumbling because it is built on sand and not built on the, on the solid foundation of our faith in Christ? Or are the waves of the many temptations and trials of the world disfiguring us, and especially with regards to who we are as the true masterpiece of God? Unfortunately, our individual castles, and in some cases, the castles built on sand of our society are crumbling and very unrecognizable as a structure, especially with regards to society's views and attitudes about some very important and crucial questions and topics, such as the use of drugs, alcohol, gambling, the dignity and permanence of marriage, chastity, and the respect of relationships, and the many other very important and foundational Christian values. We pre pretend to live in a very civilized society, yet many attitudes and actions are far than civilized. But we are blessed as Catholics to have a very clear moral teaching called the theology of the body that focuses on the blessings of our relationships and the blessings of our emotions and the blessings that God has given us in our intellect and how our emotions, our intellect, and our relationships are all created by God and created for God. A healthy understanding of relationships brings us happiness. 
not only now, but also in the future. Whereas dysfunctional relationships are built on using and being used and may bring temporary satisfaction, but in the end bring only hardships and a collapsing structure. A balanced, a wholesome, and a healthy understanding of ourselves that are found in the Bible are the parameters that we always want to live with. And we have a daily choice whether we want to follow a biblical understanding of our bodies, of ourselves, and of our relationships, or whether we want to follow what the latest trends in music, in shows, in music, in movies, or in advertisements try to sell us. We're moving further and further away, it seems at times, from the understanding of the importance and the permanence of real relationships, and unfortunately sometimes moving into a direction of commercially induced hype and excitement that is only trying to sell us a product. St. Paul speaks about the importance of respecting our body in his letter to the Romans, which we read today. For just as you once yielded your members to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now yield your members to righteousness for sanctification. He challenges us to reject a certain way of life that may be popular and that may surround us into a way of life that is rooted in Christ. It is very surprising that some music lyrics re reflect such great disrespect for who we are as dignified men and women. But actually, it is even more surprising that we, as men and women of faith, often find absolutely nothing wrong with what we are watching or listening to. We should never have a panic or a siege mentality, but we should have a discerning attitude that listens and reflects whether what we are watching, listening to, or saying affirms or contradict, contradicts our biblical values. Things will only get better if we are careful with what products we buy, what music we listen to, and what shows we watch. We live in a very consumer world. And in a consumer world, things will keep getting produced if there is someone consuming them. So if there are less people consuming the things that are not aligned to our values, then more things will be produced that affirm our values. And as you see most recently, there have been many very good movies that have faith-based and faith-related themes. Why? Because many churches and many people of faith have made a point to sponsor them, to support them, and to spread the news about them. What we believe, and this is very important to keep reinforcing in our mind every day, what we believe is not outdated. What we believe about relationships, about the dignity of the human person, about family, about faith, is not prehistoric. What we believe is not backwards and unenlightened. Rather, good decisions, which are based on biblical principles, help us to develop an emotionally and spiritually healthy way of life that brings us happiness and joy now and throughout our entire life. It may, of course, seem like an uphill battle to stand out and be different and at times to be saying no to this and no to that. But we have the daily choice to either conform or to be transformed by the word of God. St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans, I appeal to you, therefore, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable and 
perfect. We also can't forget that when we live our faith, we invite Jesus into our daily thoughts and actions, and we also take the example of the centurion in today's gospel, who, who told Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. We have a daily choice to welcome Jesus into our home, to welcome him unto our, under our roof. We have a daily choice to welcome him or to follow the trends that are only interested in having us purchase something. When we ask the Lord for help, it's very important to also realize that we are also making a commitment to follow his will. If we have made bad decisions in our life, it is okay. It's important to recognize that we all make bad decisions and to admit that our sins are sins that the Lord can heal. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, the Lord lifts us up. God is not interested in the wrath, the terror. We all need to know that God loves us. We need to be convinced deeply that when we open our heart to God and admit our weaknesses to God, God does not shut the door, but he welcomes us with an open and loving heart. The centurion said, Jesus said to the centurion, go, be it done for you as you have believed. And that's what happens when we humble ourselves before the Lord. We need to allow God to work in us. And when he works in us, we allow God to work in our society. To move our minds and our actions to the wholeness and the goodness to which he desires us to live. And to which he created us to live in. All these things are much more important than sandcastles or anything else we build that will eventually fall apart. We build up ourselves to maintain our self-respect, our dignity in this world, and also to prepare ourselves to stand in dignity before the Lord who created us in his image and likeness.